the silence. which has nothing to do with the absence of sounds. As always, the foundation of our meetings. Of our lives, really. Of life, really. It's like the canvas on which the story of our lives is painted on. No matter what is happening in the painting, the canvas is always untainted, always pure, always remains free of the painting, even though Paradoxically, it becomes one with the painting. No matter how dramatic, exciting, beautiful or tragic, the scenery may be it's good to understand and to experience and to live up to that understanding that if someone would come around and wash off the painting. This silent background, this untouched silence is still
there in its pristine glory and its purity. Its colorlessness, its transparency allows for this beautiful variety of paintings, of sceneries, of tragedies, The magic is as more we tune into this silent background, the substratum of the play, like in our meetings, hopefully, this silence comes to life. It's so happy to be seen. It celebrates in evaporating this beautiful perfume of peace. Of presence, or happiness, and then somehow I can't stop smiling because there's such a joy bubbling in coming together in this silence in our shared being.
When we rest like that, in this silence, naturally, effortlessly, we recognize, we realize that it is the essence of all of our experiences, the essence of our being. Different experiences pass this silence, thoughts, feelings, perceptions. Like this sounds of my words, they come and go out of the silence, they emerge and dissolve back in this silence. Everything comes and goes, but this silence is always there, independent of the sounds coming and going. In fact, without this silence, without the canvas, there is no painting, there is no story, there is no me. Everything in our experience depends on this silence, but this silence does not depend on our experience. is the solid rock that we can count on, that we can trust on, that we can build our life upon. as it is so fundamental, so crucial, so essential to all of our experience. We give it some extra space, we could say. 
please don't take my words for real or literal. These are all just pointers, of course. Language is always limited. So we give it a little extra space in the beginning of our meetings. We tune into it, so to speak. Even it's always there, like the canvas underneath the painting. We tend to get so fascinated by the scenery, by the play. that some of us may still sometimes tend to overlook this essence, this foundation of our experience. The silence and the greatest paradox of all times, if we want to be a bit pathetic, is like the greatest magician. It's always there. It's always the essence of our experience, of our being. There is no way we could lose it or not be it or not even experience it, we might come into that, what I mean by that. Because it is an experience, even it's not a normal, phenomenal human experience. Nevertheless, it is experienced all the time. And still in this great magic play that we play with ourselves we convince ourselves that we don't know don't experience what we truly are.
we play such a successful magic game with ourselves. that makes us believe convincingly that we don't know, that we don't understand, that we don't experience this happiness, this peace, this presence continuously. It's like the blue sky that I sometimes use as a metaphor. But with like the blue sky would forget its spaciousness, skyness, and what identify with the clouds passing by would take the clouds so serious, would be so obsessed, we could say, by the weather which we see sometimes in human expression. That all there is apparently is the weather, the clouds, the winds, the thoughts, the feelings, the sense perceptions. That which is experienced becomes apparently exclusively what is here and the sky, the blue sky that is the container, so to speak, for all the weather is apparently forgotten. But no matter if it's forgotten or not, it's still skying. It's still holding the space, as we say these days in some circles holding the space for the clouds to be. <laughs> it's not holding anything in reality, it just is. Happily doing nothing, skying, allowing the weather to pass. Now, this may sound like a good sound, like an abstract philosophy, some sky or some silence that we somehow maybe feel, experience as this presence, as this peace, but it seems to be maybe still kind of something out there.
So let's look at this. What I call silence so far. What um, qualities does it have? What is this essence of our experience? This essence of our being, what is it made of? so to speak. Obviously, in our experience, not theoretically, here and now in our experience, obviously it's not made out of thought, because somehow thought within you and appearing as the sound, sounds coming out of my mouth are somehow emerging from this silence and dissolving in this silence. So thought is experienced from this silence, so to speak. And not thought is experiencing. The thought of I am experiencing, for example, is just a thought which is experienced by this silence. So it cannot be thought that is the essence, the nature, the reality, we could say, of my experience. I am non-dual, loving, infinite, universal awareness is an amazingly beautiful thought, but it's just a thought. It's in a way equally valid, like I am uh, Napoleon and I'm going to conquer the world. The thought is not the thing, which is not a thing. The thought is the thing. That which is thinking is free of thought. Otherwise, thought could not be experienced. It needs this transparent canvas, this transparency, this colorlessness, this emptiness, this silence to experience anything like thought.
So we could say even thought is made out of this silence. Silence is not made out of thought. It's free of thought. And every single thought, including all of them that are coming out of my mouth, are best case a good pointer, a good um, description, a good vehicle to this silence. But it can always only take us to the bridge, I like to say, and then we have to cross. And leave thought behind. Leave everything behind. to experience purely this essence of our being, that which is always there. So these satsangs, these meetings, ideally function as this vehicle Thought has a bad reputation in spirituality, but not in our meetings. Thought is this vehicle that can bring about understanding. And here we have to see very clearly, especially for our new friends participating for the first time here, that understanding and thought are two different things, so to speak. Thought is the vehicle that can carry us to understanding, so to speak. It can carry in the background the understanding. The silence is the understanding carried out into this world but the understanding itself is the experience of this essence of our being In fact, understanding or knowing 
is synonymous here in our language with this being. Understanding is like a taste of that flavor of our being when we drop the vehicle and we cross that bridge and there The words, the thoughts subside and the understanding remains timeless, eternal. Thought may re emerge and says, Ah. Now I understand. And yes, that is a translation and description of an authentic experience of understanding, but the thought is not the understanding itself. It is already the copy the translation, the explanation, the description of the understanding. And there we have to be very careful that we don't mix the two. So here we, we value very much Ramana Maharshi, the great Indian saint from one of our favorite places in the world. Arunachala described it like, using a thorn to remove the thorn, Ru using the thorn of words, of teaching, to remove the thorn of ignorance, of confusion, of misunderstanding, which brings about this magic forgetting and when the thorn has removed the thorn, we can throw both away. And we don't need the thought, the words anymore, but it doesn't mean that thought, words are useless or meaningless. Quite the contrary, as we have discovered and some will may discover with us in those meetings how valuable and how important understanding is. This understanding is like this magician, whoever that is, let's forget about that for now, revealing one of its tricks of concealing Maya, traditionally called, concealing the truth, 
from us. And the moment of understanding, it opens the door and we see clear and it's like, ah, yeah, right. And then maybe a huge load of thought comes on top of it and, and we may forget the next moment again what we understood. But the understanding in that moment was authentic, was sincere. So it's a, a moment, a timeless moment where we kind of reveal to ourselves that which was apparently misunderstood, forgotten, confused. But the one that understands is not the thought, it's us. When we have the insight or we understand something in satsang, it's like, oh yeah, I understand. It's not like, ah, oh, the silence has understood. No, it's clearly me Ah, I see. So well, we may see, understand that a quality of this silence, a quality of that which we call I, is this understanding, or we could call it intelligence, pure intelligence. or pure consciousness. Knowing and being are one. the one that understands, the one that recognizes the truth is, and there is the great magic paradox, is the one who has apparently forgotten. Every glimpse of understanding dismantles this illusion of that there is like two. There's just the one. 
that recognizes that which was never forgotten. And in the same way, as thought is not experience, as thought is not conscious, thought is not aware, but we are aware of thought when we look into the qualities of this silence, of this consciousness. We can discover in the same way, and that's what we're doing and strengthening here, so to speak, experientially over and over and over again. We see naturally, effortlessly, that also the rest of our experience, like sense perceptions, like these sounds, like the temperature in the room, like the taste in our mouths, all phenomena, passing by clouds in our experience. And then there is the big one, this sensation the sensation, the big sensation of me. I am because I feel myself maybe here in the chest. There is this sensation of being, the sensation of I am. But is this sensation aware, or am I aware of this sensation? What is the base layer of my experience? What is the fundamental experience, the essence of my experience? Is the sensation aware, or am I aware of the sensation? You see, this is not a philosophy. It's very clearly our experience. That this silence This pure knowing, this pure intelligence, 
is that which is aware, that which is conscious. meaning that which is experiencing anything that we are experiencing as a human being. And finally, as we have discovered already, it's not some silence out there, some consciousness, some intelligence, some God outside. Of us. It is I that is aware. It's the undeniable fundamental experience of all of us. I am. I exist. I am aware. I have to be aware to know that. That's why we call it consciousness or awareness. This silence. It is and it knows that it is. It understands that it is, it is aware that it is always like the canvas on which the changing paintings are drawn. So it is and will always be the essence of our meetings. Without consciousness, There would be no experience whatsoever. So we, before we attend to, and we do attend to here, we, we are friends of experience. We love the human experience. We, we want to celebrate this human experience, yes. But before we can do that, we have to recognize, remember, understand the one that is experiencing. And these days, like my last couple of weeks that were very challenging physically, and then the mind also gets affected when the body is not functioning. But many, many, many of us, you know it from your own experience or friends around, these are intense times for many people. The experiences are not all just pleasant now. Everything gets shaken up. Things are rumbling and crumbling and 
it's not getting less, it's somehow it's getting more. So if we only know the experiences and not are really firmly, deeply rooted in understanding and experience of the one who is experiencing, we might get in serious struggles now. We need to know this rock of our being. We need to be in touch experientially and in understanding with what we truly are, which is unchanging, which is never tainted, which cannot be harmed, which yes, is eternal and infinite. I'm just naming what you experience anyway in this, what we all experience anyways in this presence, in this silence. Don't need to make a big fuss about it. But we need to undo the magic, so to speak. We, we, we are all this magician. It's our own magic play. And if we fall for our own magic, we will end up suffering. Because when we exclusively identify with that which is experienced without being in touch, consciously, knowingly in touch with the experiencer, with the one in which all of that is happening, we might get swallowed or swept away by those intense waves that are moving through this dream, this play, this intensity of energy, of experience is more sensitive. We, we are, and as more we actually are in touch with the whole painting, with the totality of the universe the world, which is all in us, consciousness, as more overwhelming, as more we may experience the intensity in a different way than before, or than people around us, and we wonder like, why, why? Why am I feeling all of this? And, and why am I struggling maybe in my body, in my mind, my emotions? So much is moving through these days. And sometimes we may feel a bit alien because around us everyone keeps pretending that everything is just uh, business as usual. But we, we feel, no, it's... It's our reality we feel, we experience to some degree that the intensity, the volume is going up, 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 up. It's the nature of this dream, so we also don't make such a huge thing out of it. There are cycles in the dream, and it seems we're coming to a crucial point of one cycle. At some point, we all these avatars, us, eventually, we, we're kind of longing as a collective consciousness as a collective soul for a new experience. We get tired a bit of playing this particular form of forgetting. So we we spice it up. We we change the game and, and we, we get confronted. And the structure that we have built 
maybe for hundreds or even thousands of years in bigger cycles that are very well known in the in the scriptures start to crumble and start to break down and, and we have to find our way anew it's not the bad thing it's our own choice our consciousness chooses to change the game again a bit or a bit more maybe this time it's quite something We don't deny the changes of intensity, the changes in the world, the changes in our bodies and our minds. We quite the opposite. We we do our best to shine the light of consciousness, of intelligence, of understanding on them to integrate them in the whole and the totality of our experience. But for today especially, because we have a few new faces, what carries us through this intensity, what we can count on, what we can anchor ourselves in where we find rest It's this silent, aware presence of being. Or in other words, what we are, our selves, what we call I. Without knowing, understanding, experiencing what we are, how can we experience anything as it is? We will only experience thoughts about how it is or feelings about how it is or perceptions about how it is without the rooting in reality, in the source, in our being, there's always the danger that it's kind of tainted with confusion, with ignorance, with personal separate identity that is quite the magic that things appear quite different to what they really are. So in other words, this silence that we tune into here over and over again is simply ourselves. I which could sound a bit selfish if we would all have a separate I that we 
we look into another time, of course, it's a universal I, it's our shared being. And even though we are always aware, the blue sky is always there. This is the magic of life. To recognize that, to remember that. Makes me smile, makes me giggle here in the beginning of the meeting because there is so much joy in that la joie de vivre the joy of being alive as I like to say what could be more joyful than getting consciously in touch what we are what is real What is eternal? What is our Yeah, sometimes it's better than to shut up. And let the vehicle stand and just remain in it. Just be it. And being it consciously is understanding it knowingly. It's like a positive loop. And this is satsang. It enhances and amplifies the understanding, the experience, and it also amplifies the disruption, the distanglement of ignorance, the letting go of the identification with a thought-based personal me. The ignorance is magic and the dissolving of the apparent ignorance is also magic. to speak.
Sharon, are you are you still here? Your question is coming. Or your comment in the group is coming to mind. By the way, if you are not in the group, we have two signal groups, one formal one for announcements like the meetings or postponing or meetings or so. We don't always send an email. So, hey, if you would like to um, participate regularly in the meetings, Laura will post them here in the chat, the two groups. So the one is formal meetings and being group and the other one we call happy campus. Um, it's our group of friendship where we can share with each other and share experience or some, sometimes I share something stupid or funny, some memes, anything is allowed here where the group regulates. So in the happy campus group, Sharon posted something. I just paraphrase a bit. I won't read now the whole thing. Last week about this magic of apparent forgetting of this apparent separation. This apparent duality of you and me or me and the world. I think you listened to a Ram Das talk, right, of my dear teacher. But then you wrote this week that this has dissolved a bit, this question. And it's true what you said, that, that of course the separate me for its survival will always look for some conflict some problem and the greatest problem is being a separate me for the separate me never overcomable so to speak so this great paradox of feeling, experiencing ourselves apparently as separate and in the same time possibly understanding that it's not true. It often still leaves us because the ignorance the magic of separation has been so hardwired into us it's been learned for so long and apparently based on this conditioned learning experienced for so long that the big bang of understanding of enlightenment usually does not for most of us, we spoke here many times, resolve the conflict of, I know I am this eternal, infinite, universal consciousness. And in the same time, I may don't feel that, I still see myself separate from people, I feel my body separate from people. Or I have still hidden beliefs that are hiding. The magic is still working on me that make me believe that I'm a separate entity. And then the separate entity, the ego, 
and that's coming back to what you wrote, I think, today or yesterday. It likes to take on the role of consciousness. It's a great copycat. I call it a clown sometimes. It always comes on stage after the party, after the show, after the the performance, a beautiful performance of some acrobats, and then the clown comes and and takes the applause, right? That's the the nature of the of the of the ego, of the separate me, basically. So it adapts a lot spiritual teachings and makes a, a new copy out of it, so to speak. And one thing that it adapts it pretends to be the one who who wants to know as you discover this this like ah I wanna look into this. And then we may think, ah, this is this wish to know, this wish to understand, this wish to maybe dissolve the, the traces, the remnants of separation in me, in thought, in feeling, in perception, that they are coming from the ego from the separate me that is kind of looking for a solution that it can never find. But there we have to be cautious because that would assume this, what I call sometimes suicidal ego, that it's like a, the, 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 when the murderer is the policeman and tries to, to catch itself. No, the wish and the longing for the satsang and for the Ramdas talk and for the, and also the questions, as long they arise, as long there is doubt, as long there is a convincing thought, feeling, perception of separation, the longing to dissolve that in understanding, in experience, comes from consciousness. It comes from you. It's a sincere wish to dismantle the magic. So it's valid. It's, it's welcomed. It's, it's It's important to stay open as long there is traces of separation, traces of confusion, traces of feelings that that appear to be belonging to a me, to a separate me. So we are very much welcoming those here, Sharon. We we wanna give them, so to speak, that, that, that space, that extra space that I spoke about, that they all can find its dissolution, its recognition in understanding, in experience, that it's actually, otherwise we, we may get tricked by this traces of separation of separate me, that it's not worth to look at them and in that way protecting my structure of a separate me hmm? you you understand where, where i'm going i just unmute you in case you you want to say something so I hope I have them. Um... Uh, okay. Um, yes, you answered my question 
even before you mentioned that I asked it, actually, this whole talk was about my question this and the value. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear. I cannot see you anymore, but I can hear you. Where are you? Yeah, it, it's either or. I don't have. Ah, okay. I don't have. Okay, no problem. I, then I then I listen. Where are you, Sharon? Can I ask? Where you, where are you tuning in from? E Ecuador. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I'm not from Ecuador, but I'm talking from Ecuador. <laughs> I see. Well, but yeah, we're not from Peru, but yeah, hosting from Peru. Where are you from? I'm from a lot of places, but I grew up in Israel. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. We have another like friend from, from Israel here, Anton. He's been with us for a while. So your your questions, your doubts or oh. my contradictions are very welcomed to be addressed from all of you it's always full of paradox so don't be shy to to put me on the test okay thank you mm. thanks a lot Oh, Gal is also from Israel. Wow, we have a new team after the French and the Australian and the German team, which is missing today. So, yeah, you are in Israel? I'm actually currently in Portugal, but originally. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, well, we're heading probably to Portugal. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just asking because this intensity and this, um, but it's everywhere anyways. But of course... So we lost Rick somehow. He sent in a beautiful question. We'll keep it for for next week. Very important topic when we dive a bit deeper into this paradox. And the, the difference between presence and being, which is a very important topic because it, it can keep us bound to get hooked on presence, as I say sometimes, where this Consciousness, the silence is, is colorless, transparent. 